on Ehrlichman. Well, across the country, we've heard about stories of retailers that were off to a solid start in 2020, only to be quickly slowed by COVID-19. Sleep Country, well-known mattress re retailer, no exception. They had a very solid situation playing out in January and February. And then when they reported their quarterly results for the first quarter, as we were reporting here, uh, they had a 27% plunge in their adjusted profit. They suspended their dividend and their stock buyback plan. Let's check in with David Friesma. He's the CEO of Sleep Country, and David joins us now. David, thanks for being with us. Um, maybe we can just start by, by talking about going through this experience of having to navigate COVID-19 and, and what it's been like for your business? Well, it's uh, it's obviously been uh, un unlike anything we've ever, ever been through before. Um, we're fairly fortunate in the sense that uh, we have 276 stores, but they're smaller stores and they don't get a lot of traffic. And so we were able to really control what was going on in the store up until the point that we chose to close. Um, we also are pretty fortunate uh, in the sense that we have a strong e-commerce platform and we were able to pivot more business over to that. Uh, but having said that, it certainly doesn't make up for the stores that are closed. But our people are safe. Um, they're on a, uh, we were able to not have to lay off anybody up to this point. And so we feel that we've uh, been able to get through it as well as we can, could be expected so far. And, and I feel we've been at, we've been asking a lot of retailers this question about you know stories of uh, different provinces having different paths forward with reopening. Um, what's most important to you? I mean, what are the questions you guys are asking the most when it comes to whether it's talking to government officials or just talking to all of your stakeholders and your customers and your employees? What matters most when when you talk about reopening locations? Well, we all understand that we have to, at some point, start reopening again. And so we're going to be start, we are starting to reopen our stores as of Monday, across, you know, in different parts across the country as allowed. Um, and, you know, we've been working very hard to make sure that our stores are going to be very safe uh, and have the protocols in place to be ready to serve our customers and our associates properly. Uh, fortunately, as I mentioned earlier, you know, our, we're relatively low traffic stores. And so it's a lot easier for us than other retailers. Uh, but we've gone, uh, for instance, we've always had a pillow protector, a, a shield that goes on top of the pillow for people to use. And uh, we'll continue to do that, obviously. But we've also created a, a mattress shield so they can put a reusable, uh, not a reusable, excuse me, a one-time use um, a shield on the mattress to help make them be more comfortable and more safe. And those are for the people that want to go back to the stores. For those that don't go back to the stores right away, we have created an online chat and phone program to help people that want to do the purchase virtually but still get the assistance they need. So we're really trying to make sure we're there for our customers. Those are all really interesting points and, and kind of gets to the, you know, the, the shift in retailing going forward. And, and you guys were already, you know, at least partially there, given the e-commerce operations and you acquired ND as well. Um, and so there was that ability to go into the store. If you want to go into the store, you can go online. But how, 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 um, how does the business break down, do you think, going forward? I mean, how much of it is going to be the in-store experience versus how much is going to be the online experience? If you had to guess on where things go down the road. Well, I, I mean, I believe that it's going to be quite heavily online at the beginning. And then as with uh, as probably normal, what will happen is people will become more and more comfortable going back into their normal life as time evolves. Uh, and then, you know, when there's a vaccine, that will change things even more. But I would say that it's going to ramp in different ways. You know, we are, as I say, uh, a very tactile purchase. So people do want to come and experience it prior to buying it. Um, but you know, uh, we have a very uh, large online business, both with Andy and Sleep Country and Dormevu. And so we can continue to shift to that as much as necessary. And we can make our stores very comfortable for the customers that do want to come in. So as you navigate all of this, um, obviously people will know your stores from some of the different facilities where there's already conversations taking place with landlords, for example, on, on things like rent relief. I mean, what are some of the things you can do, the negotiations you can have, the conversations you can put in place when it comes to conserving money? You know, we talked about some of the shareholder related moves that, where you guys are conserving some money, but just in terms of just day-to-day -day business, what, what you're doing right now. 
Well, uh, a few different fronts on that. First of all, our, we're very fortunate as a business as well that a lot of our business is variable costs. So, you know, our costs do go up and down quite a bit with our revenue. So that helps us a great deal. Um, we do have also great relationships with our suppliers and our vendors. Uh, we've been very loyal uh, for the last 25 years and uh, we have good relationships and that's beneficial. Uh, the other thing that gives us a lot of comfort is that, you know, unlike a lot of other retail, the purchases that are not being made today are deferred purchases. I mean, people are going to have to replace their pillows and their mattresses in the future, and we'll be there for them. What's, what's, your, what's your path? Like, how much uh, flexibility do you have on that front? I mean, could there be a scenario where if people just don't feel quite comfortable soon enough for your own expectations that you'll have to make those friends? Um, good cash position, but I, I mentioned uh, moves like dividends and, and buybacks suspended. What's what's the roadmap for that? When would you you know decide that okay we, we can go back to focusing on some of those shareholder friendly things that we've prided mm -hmm. ourselves on in the past? Well, you know, uh, one of the things that, you know, the reason we have a strong balance sheet is that we've been a very prudent financial company for 25 years. Um, but we do like to return uh, money to our shareholders when we can. So we're going to really be focusing on getting back that as quickly as we can. But uh, we're going to do it in a prudent fashion. Um, we're going to just see how the stores begin to ramp up. We'll see, um, you know, are, is there another flare up of the um, of COVID-19. And so, you know, every, the one thing that we're learning about this is that we're taking in more and more data every single day. And uh, for instance, I can't even actually tell you how many of our stores we're going to open next week because that's how fluid it is. That will change if some if the province makes another announcement. So we're just having to be very nimble. And fortunately, we have the ability to do that. Hmm, really interesting. Flexibility, obviously, key right now. David, thanks very much. Really appreciate your insight. David Friesma, CEO of Sleep